All praise to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakah Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone who are pushing this doctrine of truth to the nation of Israel who are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. I'd also like to say peace and salutations to the men, women, and children who are also part of the elect. I wanted to do a lesson today. I don't uh, have a title for it just yet. I mean, I was just reading through um, Tobit, the 13th chapter. The first 10 verses, which are, um, it says a lot in the way of uh, who salvation is for. And um, it essentially excludes the heathen nations by omission, like I always say. Okay, if you're not included, if you're not named as a beneficiary in an inheritance or anything that's given from someone, then how can you realistically make a claim to the benefits that's being bestowed to the uh, individuals who are named as the beneficiaries? Okay, I know I said a mouthful, but um, that's a pretty straightforward um, analysis of um, salvation and who it's for in the Bible. Okay, we all know that it is uh, those of, those of us who are in the truth. We know that it is um, exclusively for the Israelites. Okay, there's no question about that. But of course, if you're dealing with Christians, well, salvation's for everybody. And that's simply not true. You know, if it were true, I would be preaching that. I would be teaching that. Okay? But it simply isn't the truth. All right? Salvation, according to the Bible, there are many, many scriptures, countless scriptures in the Bible that identifies exactly who salvation is for, okay? So without further ado, I'm going to jump into the scripture because it speaks for itself, okay? And this is one of the more damning scriptures in that it tells you exactly um, how and why we uh, ended up in captivity in so many words. I mean, it doesn't give you explicit details, but you can figure it out that this is referring to a, uh, a condition, a current condition that is um, obviously temporary. And it may seem forever. It may seem like it's forever because it's been a very, very long time. I mean, you know, the nation of Israel has gone through captivity after captivity after captivity, and it just seems like it's endless. That's what it honestly seems like. Okay, um, you read the Bible and all it talks about is our, our slavery, captivity, okay, and oppression and being downtrodden. You know, ultimately we know that salvation comes at the end when the Messiah ushers in the kingdom of heaven, but um, it just seems like it's a very long time before that actually happens. But anyway, I digress once again, but here we go. Um, this is Tobit chapter 13 verse 1 then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said blessed be blessed be Yahweh that liveth forever that's God and blessed be his kingdom verse 2 for he doth scourge and hath mercy he leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again neither is there any that can avoid his hand? Now let's look at this word scourge. I thought that was an interesting use of the word because scourge is essentially a whip. I guess it's a bull whip. Um, it has a handle with um, uh, multiple uh, thongs that uh, come out of the handle and they're used to, to whip, to punish people. So Tobit 
just said, He doth scourge, meaning Yahweh, our power, the Lord. He scourged the nation of Israel, of course. And he did that by putting us in the captivity. Okay, that's a form of a, a punishment. That's exactly what it is. Okay, he beat us into submission. Okay, uh, we've maintained this oppression for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years okay and this is secondary to the most high's scourge of Israel as a nation okay we all went through captivity so it also says well, let me read it again for he doth scourge and hath mercy so this scourge isn't permanent okay this is a temporary um, condition or state because ultimately, as prophesied, he's going to show us mercy, right? So it, it says, he leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again. Now, according to Christians, this means that he's going to send us down to hell. The place of fire and brimstone where Satan dwells with all his minions and, um, and this uh, inferno torturing souls for infinity but this doesn't say that we're going down to hell forever because it says he leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again which means this is a temporary condition okay and that's what that means in this context of course it means a temporary condition a very harsh condition a very oppressive condition um, it includes being tortured murdered, raped, brutalized by our slave masters, our captives, Esau, Edom, okay? And you can obviously figure that out because it says, again, I'm going to repeat it, he leadeth down to hell, that condition of slavery that's supposed to be a temporary condition, right? And he bringeth up again. So that means he's going to bring us upward to our... Um, to our uh, original, um, uh, originally intended lot, which was to be rulers of this earth. So that means we're going to um, obviously inherit the kingdom of heaven, and it means that we're going to uh, govern and rule on earth here, okay? So that'll be our heaven, okay? Because that is also considered a condition. Okay, a condition of rulership. There's multiple definitions for both heaven and hell. Okay, and um, in this context, heaven means rulership. Hell means not being in rulership. And you can take it a step further by also saying that it also means slavery, oppression, poverty, um, physical affliction, disease, terminal illness. Because it's all about suffering, okay? All those things I just mentioned comes with suffering. You do it and you suffer while you while you are afflicted, right? So that's what that means. So, you know, we, we can establish that um, hell, again, like I said, is a condition. And heaven is a condition of rulership. So it says, neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Verse 3, confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel. Why? For he hath scattered us among them. That in and of itself was a curse. Okay, that's another curse. Being scattered amongst the heathen, amongst people that wouldn't allow us to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Um, during Greek exile... When they, uh, when uh, the Greeks had us in in slavery, we um, we couldn't identify ourselves as as Jews. We couldn't call ourselves Israelites, right? So, you know, like I said, scattering is a curse. Okay, that's torture. Just like now. I mean, I can only imagine what it was like then. But now it's the same. 
because they make it almost, I'm not going to say impossible, but they make it a challenge to want to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. Why? Because you have to work on the Sabbath on many days, you know, to, to uh, provide for yourself, provide uh, food, shelter, and clothing. You don't have the luxury of saying, you know what, I'm not going to work um, on any Sabbath days or holy days, okay? A lot of times, if those days fall on your work days, well, guess what? You got to work, okay? That's hell, especially being in the truth, because now you have a desire to want to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and you can't, okay? I mean, to some degree, you, you can. You know, we do the best we can with what we have, you know, given our situation right now, okay? Um, you know, pork being offered and just about everything. They put pork in every food, almost, um, pastries. Um, I hear it's in water bottles. I hear it's in wine. I mean, you can't, it's, it's really hard to avoid it. You got to go out of your way to avoid it. Okay. And I think that's done by design by Esau Edom. Why? Because he wants to keep us going off. You know, he wants to do any and everything in his power to preserve his rulership. Okay, so he's not going to make it easy for us. You know, he's going to put mixed fabrics in our garments and our clothing. Okay, 50% polyester, 50% whatever else. Okay, we know that's a sin that breaches the law. Okay, again, um, you know, this is it, it's it's a challenge. You know, keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. And again, that's because we are dwelling amongst the heathen. Now, when the Savior returns, guess what? Our glory is going to be restored and uh, taken to the highest level, if you will. All right? And um, we're going to rule this world in righteousness. Just us. Notice that it hasn't mentioned anything about the heathen. All it mentions is that we were, in fact, scattered amongst them and we still are all right verse 4 there declare his greatness and extol him before all the living extol means to render praise okay enthusiastically okay uh, for he is our lord and he is the god our father forever verse 5 and he will scourge us for our iniquities and will have mercy again and will gather us out of all nations among whom he hath scattered us. Now that is a tremendous cut to that doctrine of uh, Christianity that says that everybody can be saved. Because this verse just said that he's going to gather us from all nations in which we were scattered. Right? I mean, you can't ignore the scripture. You can't make pretend it's not here. You can't ignore it for your own vain opinion or to push your narrative, okay? Because that's what Christians often do. You ignore scripture in favor of uh, your opinion or, or your narrative that you're trying to push, okay? I mean, you can only do that for so long until you just start looking like a complete idiot because ultimately that's what you're looking like you continue defying you know everything that's written and opposing it being the gainsaying uh, gainsayers that you are okay because that's what gainsaying is all right let's move on to verse six if ye turn to him with your whole heart and with your whole mind deal uprightly before him then will he turn unto you, okay? Because he turned his back on us. He cut us off. We lost our heritage, all right? But it was prophesied, but that would be a temporary condition, like I mentioned previously, okay? And he's turning his face to us again now. Those of us who are repented and converted to his ways again, following the law, statutes, and commandments, you know, he's smiling upon us. Okay, we're out here doing his work, and that's what he wants us to do. That's pleasing to the Lord. All right? Where was I? 
Therefore, see what he will do with you, and confess him with your whole mouth, and praise the Lord of might, and extol the everlasting King. Now that word confess, that simply means to admit wrongdoing, okay? Acknowledge your transgressions, all right? All of us have committed sin, some more than others, okay? But the, the, the object, uh, objective here is to acknowledge your sins and walk away from those sins forever. Don't continue sinning and then turn around, you know, five minutes later asking for forgiveness with um, no intent to actually stop the uh, offense. Okay? Because the Most High, at some point, He's going to get angry with you. And he's going to punish, punish you. And your confessions and ask for forgive or uh, 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 pleads, uh, request for forgiveness, ultimately may fall on deaf ears. So you don't want to try the Lord, okay? And that's why it's important to confess Him with a contrite heart. All right, that's very important. Uh, lost my place again. One minute. Stand by. Okay. I'm going to read this one again, this line again. Therefore, see what he will do and confess him with your whole mouth and praise the Lord of might and extol the everlasting king. In the land of my captivity do I praise him. I'm going to read that again. In the land of my captivity do I praise him. Okay, so we are still considered to be in the land of our captivity. All right? And if we're in captivity, that means we have captors who are still ruling over us. All right? That means Esau, Edom was and still is our captors. Okay? So how could it how could it be possible for all other nations to have a part in salvation, especially Esau Edom? Well, those of us in the know, in the truth, know that Esau Edom's not eligible for salvation. We already know that. Okay? Now the other nations, they have to pay for their part in putting us in slavery. Okay, um, but after a thousand years, they'll have a chance to um, worship the Most High. Okay, they'll have to fo follow the law, statutes, and commandments. All right, and that'll, that'll have to be taught to them because they are they're not going to have the laws, statutes, and commandments written in their uh, inward parts like the Israelites. Okay, and what's important to note about that is is that the laws, statutes, and commandments once placed in the inward parts of the Israelites is going to give us everlasting life. And that promise is only good with the Israelites. Okay? That was only that was a covenant that was made only with the Israelites. That's in uh, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8. Okay? So how is salvation for everybody? It's not Okay, like I said, if it were for everybody, if salvation were for all the nations on the face of this earth, guess what? I'd be singing it and praising it to the, uh, or preaching it to the mountaintop. But the reality of the situation is, it's not. Okay? Alright, so I'm going to go down to verse 7. I will extol, I'm sorry. Let me finish that last verse. O ye sinners, turn and do justice before him. Who can tell if he will accept you and have mercy on you? You don't know, but you pray for mercy. And that's where faith comes in. You have to believe if you turn from your sin and your wicked ways and return to the law, statutes, and commandments that the Most High will have mercy on you and allow you to come back into the fold. Okay? Verse 7, I will extol my God, Yahweh power, 
and my soul shall praise the King of heaven and shall rejoice in his greatness. Let all men speak and let all praise him for his righteousness. Verse 9. This is another cut. O Jerusalem, the holy city. Remember, Jerusalem was a people before it became a place. He will scourge thee for thy children's works and will have mercy again on the sons of the righteous. Right? Verse 10. Give praise to the Lord for he is good and praise the everlasting king that is that his tabernacle may be builded in thee again with joy. Now this tabernacle is referring to the third temple, okay, which is us, the 144,000, okay? We're symbol symbolically bricks, okay, that um, are going to make up this temple, the building of this third temple, all right? I think that's in uh, Ecclesiastes um, chapter 3, verse 16, if I'm not mistaken. 